Good evening and welcome to the final round of the Sai University International Inter-School Debate Competition, War of Words. I extend a warm welcome to the contestants and their parents and welcome to your principals, counselors and teachers and the audience of this event. I welcome uh, Mr. K.V. Ramani, founder and chancellor of Sai University and Dr. Jamshed Barucha, founding vice chancellor and all my enthusiastic colleagues. I would also like to welcome our judges, Dr. Don Deakle, Mr. Nalin Buckley and Dr. Shailendra Swaminathan. We had an exciting preliminary round with contestants from India and the UAE debating on six topics based on the theme of environment. The judges, after a lot of deliberations, chose 10 finalists who will debate it out today. At this point, I would like to say a big thank you to the participating school principals, counselors and teachers for making this happen. And we at Sai University are grateful for your support and encouragement. I wish all the contestants the very best. I invite Dr. Jamshed Barucha to deliver the keynote address. Dr. Barucha, the founding vice chancellor of Sai University is a president emeritus of Cooper Union, New York. His previous positions include provost and senior vice president Tufts University, dean of the School of Arts and Science Dartmouth College, fellow center for advanced study in the behavioral sciences, Stanford University, visiting scholar at Harvard University, Stanford University, and Carnegie Mellon University. Dr. Barucha has done extensive research in cognitive psychology and neuroscience, focusing on the cognitive and neural basis of the perception of music. He was editor of the interdisciplinary journal, Music Perception. Dr. Barucha is a Pride of America honoree accorded by the Carnegie Corporation of New York. He is a recipient of the distinguished Achievement Award by alumni and alumni of Vassar College and the Huntington Teaching Award by Dartmouth College. Dr. Barucha completed his PhD in psychology at Harvard University. He is also an alumnus of Yale University, Vassar College and the Trinity College of London. Over to you, Dr. Barucha. Thank you first to the organizers of this. Nandini Uchil, our Director of Admissions. Neha Goenka a director of communications and student affairs, and to their staff, and to all of the participants, all of the participants from the very beginning, even those who didn't make it to the final, congratulations to you. I observed some of it. I was very impressed from the very beginning. It is so inspiring to see high school students debating the important topics of our time. There is nothing more important than our environment. And your topic for today, which is about water, is one of the most important of the environmental topics today. Because water is a scarce resource in some parts of the world, certainly in most parts of India. And it's an interdisciplinary topic. It's not just a topic that is the province of engineering or of any other single field. It involves lots of disparate disciplines to come together to provide water, clean water, water that's accessible when it's needed, where it's needed. And certainly some of the fields involved in addition to engineering are economics. There are socioeconomic factors affecting access to water. Water is a vehicle for the spread of disease and so there are health factors. There are cultural aspects associated with the use of water. And so it is a topic also for the humanities. There are legal aspect, aspects, so it's a topic for law. And there are international aspects. So it's a topic for international conflict re resolution because rivers cross borders and uh, countries have to negotiate access 
to water. We have selected water as one of our centers of excellence at Tsai University because it focuses the attention of our students and faculty on a critical resource that affects all of humanity, particularly India, because much of the country is semi-desert, is seasonal, and therefore in the monsoon there's plenty of water, and in the dry season there's no water. And because water is a multidisciplinary topic that requires experts in different fields who can talk to each other, who can appreciate each other's discourse so that the engineers and the economists and the public health officials and the sociologists and the data scientists and the humanists and the, the people in media who, who cover the state of pollution in the rivers and so on, and the artists and photographers who, who, who document all of that, as well as the general public who utilizes water, brings them all together so that they can speak to each other in a de democratic way to solve the problems of the world. In fact, Sai University is based on a premise that we want to fully realize the talent of every single child, every single student, all of our youth. And when you do that, when you bring out the best in everybody, you automatically end up filling up a very wide range of disciplinary approaches where some people go into this field, some people go into that field, and they connect ideas rather than society forcing on students, you must be channelized in this way, you must be channelized in that way. That's the way we're going to solve the big problems of the world, including environmental problems particularly the problem of water. I would say that from what I heard in the early debates, frankly, what our high school students are saying and the way in which they're articulating it is already far, far more sophisticated than anything I hear from politicians and so-called experts. It is you, the high school students, who really own the future of the country and of the world. And don't let anybody tell you that you're just a high school student. What do you know? I think the best solutions for the world's problems including the ones we're discussing today, but others as well. Poverty, human rights, migration of people, war, other challenges, public health, the spread of disease, pandemics. Uh, my own view is that our generation, my generation and generations before me have failed have failed the country, have failed the world. And so we are putting our faith in you. And when I say you, I mean every single one of you who is debating today, as well as every single one of the high school students who were uh, in earlier rounds, who didn't make it to the final. Um, if there's one thing that comes away that from my presentation here. It's that I want you to feel empowered, to feel confident when you go on to university and you go on to some profession that you have the confidence 
that you can solve the problems that prior generations did not solve because they worked in silos, the engineers worked on engineering problems and others worked on other problems and because there was bickering and politics and lack of courage to make policies and decisions that benefit all people for the public good. Water is the quintessential example of a public resource. And how should a public resource be managed so that it fulfills all of the demands that are placed on it? So I hope that you come out of this feeling that you're not just excellent debaters, but in fact, you are excellent policymakers and leaders. And I know for sure every single one of you is going to find yourself in a leadership role of some kind when you grow up and you graduate from university. Leadership roles take many forms. It's not just political leadership. It's leadership within your profession. It's leadership within your community. It's leadership in which you use your privileges of your education and your knowledge, not just to further yourself and your family, of course, that's important, but to do something bigger that benefits all of society, particularly those <clears throat> less fortunate than we are. I expect that you all come from a wide range of, of, of backgrounds some more fortunate than others. I would still say the fact that you're on this panel means you are highly privileged and have this opportunity to participate on an important platform that we have provided to address a major societal problem. And I hope that you'll see the same kind of leadership can be applied to almost anything. We are in the midst of a global pandemic. Okay, uh, How did that happen? I'm a scientist. I'm not a scientist who studies disease. I'm a cognitive neuroscientist, but I know enough to follow what's been going on. And I can tell you for sure that pandemics of this scale have been predicted. Predicted with certainty. When I was provost at Tufts University, we had a strong public health uh, program. All of the public experts have known for decades that there will be not just one, but many pandemics occurring in our near future caused by new viruses or new bacteria or new microorganisms of other kinds that have mutated and spread. And HIV AIDS was one of them. People were caught by surprise. Where did that come from? How did it spread so quickly? So nobody should have been surprised. When I say nobody, I mean none of the politicians are the policy makers, uh, and yet all of them seem to have been caught flat-footed everywhere around the world. Uh, and in fact, in the United States, the federal government had the data predicting that the, the, the rate of mutation and the rate of um, contact between wild animals and humans, which is how most of the pandemics since the dawn of civilization began. As humans encroach on the 
ecosystem of wildlife, they're more likely to get one of these microorganisms uh, that have been in the animal populations for millions of, of years, but have not crossed over to humans. AIDS, uh, the so-called avian flu, uh, swine flu, all of these are crossovers from animals to humans because of our encroachment, uh, our destruction of habitat for wildlife that brings humans in greater and greater contact, handling things in common, and there's a greater chance of, of a virus or bacteria or other microorganisms jumping. So our policymakers have failed us. In the United States, as I said, in the federal government, it was considered such a high priority up until the year before the coronavirus that they conducted a simulated simulated exercises what would happen if a new virus emerges and all of the federal government departments were engaged in this simulated exercise and they developed policy documents they developed action documents because the experts had said once it was AIDS, then it was avian flu, then it was this, then it was that, there will be another one because of the rate at which mutations occur, because of the increasing concentration of human populations, the increasing glo globalization of human travel and movement, and the encroachment on animal habitat. And even though they conducted those exercises and claimed that they were ready, when it happened, the top leaders had no idea what they were doing, none. In fact, the President of the United States had removed the public health expert from the National Security Council who, who had been there for decades. It was considered, always considered a national security uh, issue and um, and he decided well it's not a national security issue national security is about war and terrorism it's not about disease and when it happened it took them weeks or months there was denial there was um, medical quackery uh, proposed to deal with it. We do have the science and the data and the expertise today to detect these things early, to track them, and handle them. Now that's the pandemic. But for decades, scholars and researchers and people who are actually out in the field managing water supplies around the world have been trying to raise the alarm that the water systems are not adequate to either <clears throat> provide the water needs of people, to provide equitable access, to provide clean drinking water to prevent disease and to maintain water systems in ways that preserve the ecosystems of the plants and the animals and other aspects of the environment, the cleanliness of the water supplies of the, of the air because they do interact. That the people who handle those also have been saying water will be the next big disaster 
national global disaster. It's only a matter of time because our policymakers and our leaders, uh, uh, because it's, it's not an immediate crisis, don't pay attention to it. I'm hoping that you all, as a future generation, I'm hoping that when I'm, when I'm doddering and, and uh, uh, unable to work, I'll watch and I'll see some of your names associated with new leadership in the country, uh, in the world, that anticipates problems before they occur and that provides enlightenment and, and really intelligent, informed decisions and minimizes the bickering and the politics and works together. So thank you all for your inspiration and uh, all the very best for the debate. Again, as you know, you'll be judged not on uh, your position, but on how you argue your position and present your position. So thank you and thank you to the judges uh, as well for uh, willing to take this time. All the best.